Edgar Fruchfanger may look like any other elderly man, but this Winchester resident has an extraordinary past. When I was a child, um, I was Hitler's neighbour. 88-year-old Edgar lived in Munich in 1933 when Adolf Hitler moved into the same street as the eight-year-old and his Jewish family. I was being taken for a walk with my nanny outside his house and uh, it just so happened that at that point he came out and uh, uh, there were just a few casual people around and of course they shouted Heil Hitler and he sort of slightly lifted his hat, you know, uh, like, like a sort of democratic politician might do. And he looked at me and um, then got in the car. <laughs> it was just one car and the car drove off. That's, that's, I think that's my first memory of him. The first thing I remember hearing about it was that my mother said uh, we haven't got much milk today because the milkman said he had to leave more bottles at Hitler's flat and things like that, you know. After that I saw him quite often, yes, but gradually, of course, the whole thing became quite different, you know. He, he had a whole lot of bodyguards living in a flat in the same block, lower down, uh, black shirt bodyguards. And I think he was nearly always in uniform. And there was a sort of procedure when one could see he was there because the cars were parked along the curb. And then the black shirts would come out you hear the sort of jackboots clattering on the pavements, and they got into the other, got into the three cars, and then uh, he would come out and just do this and get into the car, and the thing would roar off, uh, and you could no longer just walk along the pavement in front of his house. <laughs> well, let's put it this way: you're obviously impressed by somebody of whom you know more or less more and more of the world revolves around this man you know what was it like growing up in germany in the 1930s <clears throat> we knew it was bad for us and of course almost more important in my particular case or in the particular case of my family was the fact that my father's elder brother was leon feuchtwanger who was celebrity, um, one of the best-known writers of Weimar Germany, who then pulled no punches about Hitler, who had already written the book, which is still, I think, regarded as a sort of cult novel. It's the first book about the rise of the Nazis, and it was published in 1930. And this, of course, infuriated Hitler and Goebbels. And one could say, well, I mean, it was said amongst the Weimar artistic, intellectual intelligentsia, my uncle was public enemy number one. That was really the, 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 the breaking point. I mean, uh, we uh, uh, knew something nasty was going to happen. My father was arrested. Uh, his library was taken away. He was sent to Dachau, the concentration camp. And uh, we, of course, had no idea whether we would come out alive because Obviously, again, if they discovered that he was the brother of Leon Feuchtwanger, he'd be dead. What was your father like after returning, after six weeks in Dachau? The whole Dachau thing was the uh, prisoners were stood endlessly out in the freezing cold, and if anybody collapsed, they were just killed on the spot and so on. So the only way one could survive was to not draw attention to oneself. I mean, my father knew that and he just managed to get through it. But when he got out, he was full of chill planes. He to go to bed immediately, did eventually recover, but uh, 
it was uh, well the whole thing was at that point designed to frighten people mostly Jews I think to leave Germany you know it was to get out and it achieved that purpose Edgar now lives in Winchester after fleeing with his family to England but he has been back to Germany and feels that time has healed his feelings towards the country he was forced to leave <laughs> 